In this video I'm going to look at the chemical properties and the physical properties of the compounds that are known as the hydrocarbons. There's three homologous series within the hydrocarbon group that we look at for leavings or chemistry. But first let's start with a definition. A hydrocarbon is what it says effectively. It's a compound that only contains carbon and hydrogen atoms. So in that regard, they're the most basic of all the organic compounds and the ones we generally start with when we're starting our study of organic chemistry. So what we're going to start with is a look at how they formed initially. So the hydrocarbons came about basically because of all the organic matter that was around on the earth millions of years ago, which had died, started to get compressed. And under really high temperature and pressure, all of that organic matter was just all the carbon and hydrogen atoms that were around at the time started to com get compressed with lots of other materials like rock and sedimentary materials. That started to cause a huge increase in pressure and temperature. And in that increase in temperature and pressure, the hydrocarbon molecules formed big long chains. And that essentially led to uh, what is now known as crude oil. So crude oil is just a mixture of really, really, really long chain hydrocarbon molecules. So I've just represented them by their skeletal formula here. Uh, so the chains obviously go on and on. These chains are just carbon and hydrogen atoms. Um, when they're found underneath the Earth's surface, they're found as crude oil, which is just this big, black, viscous material. So what chemists needed to do was to try and extract the useful compounds from that. And what they used was a process called fractional distillation, which we're going to look at now. Fractional distillation is a process where you take crude oil, so that thick, viscous material that is crude oil, and you separate that. The crude oil goes into a furnace. There it's heated to a very high temperature. So as it's heated, the vapors then enter into the fractioning column. The fractioning column is hot at the bottom and cold at the top. And as it vapors enter into the column they start to rise up so the vapors will continue to rise up until a point at which it's reached its boiling point so if the temperature that it reaches is below its boiling point that vapor will now cool down into a liquid and so condense off so what you form is different sections or fractions based on different boiling points these are the fractions that you need to know for leaving cert. So up at the very top are the ones that are the very low boiling point gases. So that's things like methane, propane, butane, different natural gases, um, also known as li liquid petroleum gases, uh, gas canisters cooking here. Um, then the next fraction, so slightly longer chains here, the next fraction is gasoline, also known as petrol. That's what we used as a fuel. Next fraction here, which is slightly longer chains again, are naphtha. Naphtha is used as a feedstock for petrol. Then we get into kerosene, which is used in central heating and aircraft fuel. Then we go down into fuel oil, which is used for ships and industry. And the material with the highest boiling point down here is the residue. Now, the residue is the stuff that's used for is also known as bitumen. It's used for road surfacing and tar and things like that. So let's have a quick look at what, how they're separated. If it's got a higher boiling point, that means that at a much colder temperature, the temperature isn't hot enough to separate the individual components of the substance. So what these interactions mean and this higher boiling point means is that at much lower temperatures, those molecules will just come together because it takes much higher temperatures to be able to break them apart and form a gas. Whereas down here, that's going to keep as a gas and keep separated at a much lower temperature than the one above it. Okay, so the first homologous series we'll come to is the alkanes. The alkanes are the molecules that have just carbon and hydrogen single bonds. They're also known as saturated molecules. Saturated because they just contain single bonds and there's no double bonds. Now, the general formula for the alkanes is Cn H2n plus 2. That means for every carbon you have twice the number of hydrogens plus 2. I've talked through the 
nomenclature of the alkanes before. We know that there's a stem and that it also has a suffix. The suffix is A-N-E. So if there's one carbon, it's methane. Two carbons, it's ethane. Three carbons, propane, and so on. For more on that, see the other video on naming of organic molecules. So there are the alkanes. You, they are saturated. That is, they just have carbon, hydrogen, single bonds. Um, next, we'll have a look at the alkenes. The alkenes have the formula CnH2n, so there is always twice as many hydrogens as there are carbons. Again, the same naming structure, except the suffix this time is ene, e -N -E. and the first one this time is ethene, because you can't have an alkene with just one carbon, because it has to contain a carbon-carbon double bond. So we call this unsaturated, because it contains a carbon-carbon double bond. Um, so the next member of the series would be propane, then butene and butetoene. So we're going to have a quick a closer look at butene and butene, just the naming of them. So if you look at butene and butene, the reason I've called them 1 and 2 is because these are actually structural isomers. Structural isomers, if you remember, are molecules which have a different structural formula, but the same molecular formula. That means they have the same number of carbon and hydrogen atoms, but they are just rearranged differently. So they are attached to each other in different ways. So the first member, butene here, just shows you that the double bond is actually a carbon number one. If I name that carbon number one, that carbon number two, three, and four. Butene has its double bond at carbon number one. Butene then just has its carbon double bond at carbon number two. So if I call that one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's butene and butene. We could go further, but they're the only ones you need to know for leaving cert. Uh, the next homologous series that we look at for the, in terms of the hydrocarbons are the alkynes. The only one you need to know is ethyne here. And the alkynes have a carbon-carbon triple bond. But the only one you need to know is ethyne, also known as acetylene. And what you need to know is you need to know how to make ethyne and test for it. So the general formula for the alkynes is CnH2n minus 2 this time. But as I said, the only one you need to know is ethyne. Again, that would be an unsaturated molecule because it could, doesn't contain all carbon-carbon single bonds. This time it has a carbon-carbon triple bond. I'm just not going to write that in there. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at the chemical properties of these three homologous series. The physical properties will all be fairly similar because they'll all have just van der Waals forces between the molecules. As the alkane or alkene or alkyne chain increases in length, there are more van der Waals, so therefore the boiling point increases. That's about it in terms of what you need to know. Now, the chemistry of these molecules is very different because the bonds between the molecules themselves are different. So, let's start with the alkanes. Actually, before I start with the chemical properties, I'm going to quickly just show you something else in terms of why the boiling point increases. So, if we have a look here, if I start off with methane here, I'm going from methane to ethane, which is the next member of the alkanes. I've increased that by one CH2 group there. And that increase in carbon chain length means that there's more points of contact, what we discovered before. If I go again to propane, I've added another CH2. So that's going to happen for all of the hydrocarbon homologous series. When we go up to the next successive member, what we're doing there essentially is increasing the carbon chain length by a CH2, which increases its boiling point because there's more points of contact between the molecules, more electrons, therefore stronger van der Waals forces of attraction, and so a higher boiling point. 